This video is dedicated to Putnam 1990 number A3. And the reason we're going to check this problem out is because it actually uses a theorem that we posted a video about just very recently. So the statement is that a convex pentagon has its vertices at lattice points, meaning the components of the points are integers. And it asks us to prove that the area of the pentagon is forced to be at least five halves. So given that we have information about lattice points, and we're trying to conclude something about area, it would be great if we had some way to relate lattice points and area at all in a particular polygon. And we can do that using what's known as Pick's theorem. Pick's theorem says that if you have a lattice poly polygon, its area is the number of interior lattice points plus half the number of boundary lattice points minus one. So it seems amenable to use for this problem because we have this setup that we're trying to find out something about area and we have some information about lattice points. For example, we know that there are at least five boundary points. So just off the bat, we know that the area is at least, well, we don't know anything about interior points, so this is at least zero, but we do know there are at least five boundary points, so it's at least five halves minus one. So the area by default is gonna be at least three halves, but we wanna increase this value somehow. So one way to try to do this is if you wanna bump this up to get a lower bound of five halves, we can try to prove that there's at least one interior lattice point. All right, so let's go ahead and try to actually do that. So we'll start by thinking about these points and their coordinates. So if you look at the parity of the coordinates, we have four options. Either both coordinates are odd, or we have an even and an even, or even odd, or odd even. All right, so as a consequence, because there's four possibilities for the parity of both coordinates, and we have five vertices in the pentagon, there has to be at least two of them that have the same parity in both coordinates. As a consequence, whatever those two points are, let's say they're P and Q, their midpoint will have integer coordinates. And the reason is because when we add the coordinates of these two points, because they have the same parity in each coordinate, the sum is going to be even in each coordinate. So half of that is going to be a point with integer coordinates. Let's say that these two points were sort of across a diagonal. So let's say the two points or two points that have the same parity in both coordinates uh, are A and C. Then the midpoint lies right over here. And as a consequence, we're happy because our area will be at least this one, because we have this one in interior point, plus the five boundary points divided by two minus one, which gives us our area bound. Awesome. Okay, so the only possible thing left is if it happens to be the case that the pair of points with the same parity in their coordinates are actually adjacent. So I'll make the assumption without loss of generality, that is this pair AB, and we have this M right over here. Now the question is, what do we do with this? So I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to think about this. Can we use this setup somehow to force yet another integer point? If not, what do we do from there? So pause this video, take a little bit of time to think about it, and then come back and take a look at the solution. All right, so let's take a look at these four points right here, B, C, D, and E. If it's the case that there's a pair of them whose coordinates have the same parity, then one of the midpoints of these line segments is gonna have integer coordinates. Now, if it's here, say, one of, in the midpoint of one of the diagonals, then we get an interior point. And so by the same argument we used before, this is at least one, this is at least five halves. And so we get this whole thing is at least five halves. It could be the case though that B and C are the ones that have a midpoint with integer coordinates. But in that case, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boundary points with integer coordinates. 
So the area then would be at least, we don't even have to think about the interior points, we get seven halves already here, minus this one, which gives us a lower bound of five halves as well. Okay, so by that argument, then, it must be the case that all four of these points, or we can make the assumption that all four of these points have different parities in their coordinates. Okay, well, if that's the case, then this point M must share, because there's only four possibilities for the parities of both coordinates, either even, even, odd, odd, even, odd, or odd, even. It must then be the case that M shares parity with one of these four points. If it's one of these three points, then the midpoint of that line segment would be a new interior point, and so we get an area of at least five halves. Otherwise, it's this point that shares a parity with M, and then we can introduce the midpoint of that, which then gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boundary points. And so we have that this is at least zero plus seven halves minus one, which again is five halves. So an interesting problem that exploits parity to be able to figure out how to introduce new boundary points or interior points with integer coordinates inside of this pentagon and then exploits using Pick's theorem quite a lot. And the hint to use Pick's theorem again was the fact that we're interested in or we're given data that deals with lattice points in the problem, and we're interested in a conclusion to deal with area, and this is a perfect theorem that relates those two. So thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, definitely click the like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.